right, hello ladies and gentlemen. I think we are live. And yes, we most definitely are. All right. Nice to see. So, before we start the stream, or the actual gameplay of the stream, I'm just going to connect my Beats to my phone because it wasn't working beforehand. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess Again, yes, his connection failed. I see that. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, but in today's episode, we are here for season number nine, uh, or season number nine's playoffs. We'll see what they offer to us this season. Um, pretty excited. Pretty excited, most definitely. Oh, what is happening? I can hear myself through my beats. I want connect to my phone. Can I connect to my phone, please? Oh, yes. Is it that hard? Don't turn it off. Come on, man. <laughs> Soon enough, guys. I promise we'll get into this episode. I am sorry. Like I said, it wasn't working before, but now that I'm trying to get it to work now, it's just not working. Come on, we can do it. Connect. Thank you very much. All right. That took longer than expected and longer than I wanted it to. But anyways, guys, hey, it's Miss here again for another video today. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, hopefully you enjoy. But in this one, we are here for, like I said, season number nine's playoffs. So we'll see what they have to offer to us. Now I'm very excited for this one because we get to face the New York Islanders who I do not recognize very much, but uh, off screen, I went around the entire league. It took me, oh Jesus, it took me way longer than I thought. It took me like 40 minutes. I, it did not feel like it was that long. I felt like it was 10, 15 minutes. Um, uh, is that right? It was either at 106 or 126 when I started, and it's currently 145, so I don't know. Either way, but I went through every single team, and I looked at every single top line, and I then after I looked at every single top line, I wrote down who was on that top line, and then I calculated all the point totals up from each top line to see which top line was best in the league. Now, if I show you guys the top two players... Uh, or if you if say you guys don't remember, if I show you guys the top two players that led the league in points, I'm sure you could guess who uh, or what team and what line finished off with the most points. And you are correct, it is Washington. So their top line was the only team to surpass 260 points this season. Not a single team hit over 300 points, which could you imagine? I mean, that would be pretty crazy. I'd love to see that one day. That would be uh, terrifying. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Anaheim was the first team I looked at because I just went in alphabetical order through each. And to be honest, they had the highest record uh, throughout the entire league until I got all the way down to Washington. I thought that uh, Anaheim was going to have the best record or the best uh, first line in the league, but I was wrong. So they had 257 points, but then you go all the way down to Washington they had 280 points. Who they let that top line of Matt Gerard, Ty Ronning, and Travis Konechny led the league in points, um, or was I guess you could say the best lead, or best line, best top line I should say in hockey this season. So yeah, I was just curious to see who, who was the best, and surprisingly enough, our line was one of the top four. I think top four throughout the entire league. So obviously number one was Washington with 280. Number two was Anaheim with 257. And I believe number three was Chicago with 253. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, it's us in fourth with 251 points. Um, now I looked at Florida. They had 250 points. And that was without Stamkos playing on their top line. And if Stamkos were to have played on that top line, 
uh, they actually would have been ahead of us in points. They would have been tied for, um, tied for, yeah, tied for most or tied for third most points in the league, uh, or as a top line. But if Stamkos had been playing with them, they probably would have done better than what they did as well. So, it, it's it's it's. It's interesting to see, but uh, yeah, so I just, I want to look through all of those to show you guys them, uh, or to let you guys know about that, but I was thinking about it, if Drewak could have got closer to the 80 point mark, we could have been second place, like if he had to hit 80 points, we would have been second place uh, in the league for uh, the best top line. Now, I didn't look at the best top pair, but maybe you could put our top pair as the best top pair we had. 119 points from two guys, which is really good, of course. So, And I believe there were two teams who um, had a defenseman who led the way. I think Nashville is one. Nashville actually had the worst. Yeah, Dante Fabro led, the lead, or led uh, Nashville in points, and Nashville also had the worst top line for points with only 115. Their top line is Bob Hadar. Uh, Pontus Aberg, who's only an 80 overall, and then Nikita Sashnikov, who's a 29 overall, or not 29 overall, 83 overall, but had 29 points, sorry. Just that entire team are minuses. Oh, Jesus, I just noticed that. Who's their goalie, then? Their goalie must be awful. Alexis Gravel and Freddie Anderson. I mean, they both did awful, but they aren't awful goaltenders. Why did that team do so bad? Uh, oh, defense. Oh, Jesus, yeah, their defense is awful. They have Dante Faber, who's very good, 92 overall. Then Edward Yelly, who's 75. Nikita Triumkin is their next best defenseman behind Faber, only a 79. Korpikoski, 76. Porkoff, 76. And Pergeron, 75. So just an absolutely awful defensive core. But, yeah, uh, Nashville, I remember. And then Boston was the other one, if I'm not mistaken. And don't, I think it was Troy Stetcher. Troy Stetcher with 59 points uh, led that team in points. So those were the only two teams with a defenseman who led their way in points uh, or, who, or who led that team in points. But like I said, the worst uh, the worst point totals for the top line this season was Soshnikov, Hadar, and Aberg with 115 points. And I think in second or second worst in the league, was Winnipeg of uh, J.T. Miller, Alex DeBrincat, and Tobias Ryder. And then third worst, I believe, was Boston, which was like Corey Suter or something. I don't remember his first name. Um, it's a it's a computer-generated player, Sidney Crosby and David Pasternak. So I guess that's it. Uh, that's all I really wanted to show you guys or let you guys know or talk to you about. So I guess now we can head on over to see uh, the... New York Islanders, and we'll see how good they are. Obviously, it's going to be the first time we ha or have slash will or slash are playing them in the playoffs, and I believe they had the leading goal scorer this season uh, in Tyson Jost with 53 goals. So that's going to be terrifying to play against, but hopefully that's not uh, – hopefully he's not too good, man. Just trying to think, what else could you do for that top line? The Islanders, their top line had 206 points, so not too bad. I'm just thinking, though, maybe having McLe McLennan up there with Jost and Shen, who's on the center, have Jost on the right wing, though. I don't know, that would be interesting to see. But looking at their forward core, it is a very good forward core, and they have very good depth. On the wing and on center. I mean, to be fair, their left wing and centers are very good. Their right wings are still good as well. But looking at their top line, they have Oliver Bjorkstrand, Tyson Jost, and Tyler Wong. Their second line is Jake DeBrusque with Braden Shen and Anthony Duclair. Their third line is Craig McLennan with Nick Suzuki and Kevin LeBanc. Their fourth line is Zach Hyman with Alexander Kovanov and Jake Vertanen. So very good forward core, like I said. Defense doesn't really get that much easier. Their top pair is Miro Heiskinen, who's a 91 overall with Matt Benning. Heiskinen has came off of, I know he's had one Norris. I think he might have had two this uh, throughout this series. I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, he's on the top pair with Matt Benning. The second pair is Ben Hutton with Andrew Nielsen. 
Not the greatest second pair, but it's still a decent one. And the third pair of Victor Antipin and Jordan Subin, which is a relatively good third pair. The goaltending is Linus Soderstrom, the actual in real life Islander. Uh, and the backup goalie is Martin Jones, who's now a 79 overall at 36 years old. So, pretty damn good team, uh, I, sh I could say. Now, if you guys aren't too familiar with our team, I don't know what the hell you're doing here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is our team. So, I'd say our top line is better. Uh, second line, though, maybe not. Third line, probably not. Fourth line, yeah, I'd say. Um, maybe it's it's close, but that's our forward core. Defensively, um, I don't know. I guess it's a pretty even defensive core. Like we have, well, I don't know. It's our top pair is one hundred percent better. Our second pair arguably better, arguably worse, and our third pair arguably worse. I'd say probably worse than the other one. Other than the Islanders, I should say, not the other one. Um, but yeah, so that's our team. Uh, obviously, the goaltender is Ronnie Thomas, who's an 89 overall. So, by overall wise, you could say we have the uh, the advantage in uh, in net, which is interesting to see. Now, Ronnie Thomas didn't or just came off a not tremendous regular season. Like last season, he had a really good one with a 926 save percentage and a 213 GAA. But this year, he had a 917 save percentage and a 2.45 GAA. So, hopefully. He uh, can redeem himself in the postseason this season like he did last season. Last season in the postseason, he had a 945 save percentage with a 1.58 GAA. Wow. I just realized, I mean, honestly, Ronnie Thomas was possibly goaltender of the year last season. He had a 926 save percentage and a 2.13 GAA in 65 games played in the regular season. He had 36 wins along alongside of that. Then in the playoffs, in 12 games played, we, he had seven wins for us, one shutout with a 945 save percentage and a 1.58 GAA. I mean, Ronnie Thomas could have arguably have been the best goaltender throughout the entire season, not just the regular season, but the postseason as well last season. So very interesting. But I think we've got everything underway or th everything ready to go, so let's get it underway. Uh, and the AHL completely forgot to even look at this, to be honest. I didn't even know Syracuse made the playoffs, to be honest. But Syracuse will be playing the Laval Rocket. We have home ice advantage. We'll see how that works out. Now, let's start the sim, guys. Uh, game number one of series number one against the Islanders in Tampa. Let's see what happens. First period, we're down to nothing. Tyler Wong and Jake DeBrusque. So... Um, Ronnie Thomas, not <laughs> not starting the postseason too great. Hopefully he'll be able to pick that up here soon, though. Second period now. All right, so it's 2-1. Matthew Joseph scores the first goal of the series for Tampa, uh, which I'm very happy to I'm very happy to see. But 2-1 uh, heading into the third isn't too bad. We're still getting out shot 21 to 20 currently, but that's that's okay. We just got to get one by Soderstrom, and then we're good. On the power play, we could. We do not, and that might have been a shorthanded goal or right after the power play ended. But Alexander Kovanov regains the two-goal lead for the Islanders. We had another power play opportunity, unable to do anything with it, though. We now have five minutes left in the period. Our third power play opportunity of that period, our fourth, and we weren't able to score on a single one. We had a great period too. We outshot them fourteen to six, and we were only able to, or we weren't even able to get a goal. I'm not even gonna check the three stars, partially because I forgot to, but it's okay. <laughs> so Syracuse won the first game in their series. That's nice to see, um, but that wasn't good at all. I mean, honestly, that just was an abysmal uh, play or not playoff performance, uh, power play performance, which. I'm thinking about it like what do I what would I even change here like I really don't know I, I just I just don't I really don't um Jaspers I was thinking Joseph could play uh in the middle but he cannot <sighs> I have no idea I really don't you know I'm just gonna keep it the way it is for now if if I see that 
in this third period we have another awful power play, then I think I'll definitely change it because it's just unacceptable. We had four power play opportunities. I almost just said game two. We had four power play opportunities, and we weren't able to score in one of them, and that's just in one period. I don't know about the first and second period. Um, but all right, second game now, obviously still in Tampa. Let's uh, let's see if we can get it or see if we can get a win here and even up the series. First period of game number two. All right, goals on each side, but we have more, which is nice to see. Victor Hedman, our captain, opens up the scoring in a sl in the slot. Interesting. Uh, almost for basically the first minute into the game, which is nice to see. So a strong start for us, and then Nikita Kucherov makes it two nothing for us, and then Braden Shen. Uh, cuts the lead in half about a minute after Kucherov's goal, which is interesting in many ways because we have a two goal two or two one lead heading into the second period, but they are doubling our shots eighteen to nine. That is the most shots I've ever seen from a first period. Uh, I really tried to fight off the yawn, and I had some of it fight off or fought off, but wasn't very successful with that. But again. We're getting outshot 18 to 9 right now. So, Ronnie Thomas, thank you for only letting in one goal on 18 shots in the first 20 minutes of play. I love you. Second period now. Goals on both sides again. But Kucherov with his playoff hat trick, uh, with his first playoff hat trick uh, back in the Tampa Bay uniform, or first playoff hat trick in this series. Uh, for him, on, on our team at least. So, that is nice to see. Tyson Jost. I was going to say, I presume to be either a captain, but maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sorry, I had to yawn there. Tyson Jost uh, r tied the game for the Islanders. Uh, so we've had two unanswered. They had two unanswered. And we have had two unanswered once again. Hopefully they don't, they don't get another two unanswered or two at all. <laughs> Uh, we'll see, though. So Jost gave them the tying goal, and then Kucherov gives us um, the lead back, and then with a late goal in the second, he completes his hat trick to give us a two-goal lead heading into the third period. We're getting outshot 28-20 to 20 right now, which isn't too bad. We outshot them that period, so that's good. Uh, but let's go third period now. Let's see, on the power play, there we go. Nikita Kucherov has four out of... The five Tampa Bay goals of tonight's game. And we were able to kill off a power play opportunity from the Islanders. Can we do it for a second time? Yes, we can. All right. But Zach Hyman makes it a two-goal game. Five to three. Another power play opportunity for the Islanders. We need to keep them out of there. Tyson Jost with 11 seconds to go makes it a one-goal game. Jesus, that is terrifying. We got outshot 45 to 29, but... Ronnie Thomas is not doing too good right now, guys. Uh, Nikita Kucherov, though, with four goals and an assist in that game. He had a point on every single goal. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. I mean, honestly, what the hell? That is tremendous. Um, yeah, I mean, Hedman had a great game, too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he had a goal and two assists, I believe it was, but... Kudrov was a monster that game. Now, uh, it's it's pretty obvious that uh, Ronnie Thomas is not doing very good right now. So, I feel like having him as the backup for this next game may not be a bad option. He's got a 902 save percentage and a 3.53 GAA. He is just doing awful, and for how awful he is doing as well. It means he probably will drop back down to the 82 or 83 overall that he actually is, which I would not want to see. You know what, though? Uh, I don't know. You know what? We'll give him another chance. If if he has an abysmal game three, then uh, Oliver Rodriguez will get the start for game four. Um. Even if we win game three, if he lets in four goals or three or more goals, I think I'll take him out. Unless he's facing like 70 shots, then that's different. But I've only ever seen that happen once, so yeah, highly unlikely that'll happen again. But I guess let's go for game number three now. Now uh, in New York, are we able, I guess Brooklyn, um, are we able to do what they did and take game one of their home ice? We have an early power play in the first, which is nice to see. 
But let's go. First period of game three. Goals on each side and two goals for the Islanders and only one for us. So Miro Heiskanen, also their potential captain, uh, opened up the scoring for them relatively early as well. Then Oleg Tudin uh, evens up the game for us later in the first and a late goal. Uh, by Anthony Duclair was the uh, leading goal heading or was the goal that gave them the lead heading into the second period which is still getting outshot for I think I mean apart from the second period of last game I think we might have gotten outshot every single period <laughs> in this series which is not good um Let's see. It's a pretty very it's a very good offensive team, and this this series just looks like it's going to be a complete offensive uh, outburst throughout the entire thing. But we'll see. So second period now. Can we get back on the board and can we hold them off? We can. All right, Pat Stillman with I think potentially his first ever playoff goal. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. I feel like he definitely did get one last season. But I'm not 100% sure. And again, guess what, guys? We got outshot that period. Uh, the Islanders now lead us in shots 22-19. to 19. We head to the third, tied at two apiece. Can we get a goal? Can we hold them off the board? With a power play opportunity, unable to do it there. All right, so we still have plenty of time to get one before the end of regulation. And again, can't forget that it is a tie game right now. With five minutes to go, though, we may have an overtime period uh, ahead of us, and it looks like we will. We will. All right, so again, getting outshot that period. But I guess in overtime it doesn't matter as much because just one shot could make the difference. So let's see who will get the overtime winner in game number three. Can we, uh, can we get close to their shot totals? We have a power play opportunity, and on the power play, Ollie Hentonen with maybe his first career playoff goal, which is nice to see. Uh, I see why we won the game. <laughs> um, okay, Oliver Rodrigue, the first star with a 962 save percentage. Now, there are injuries in this, but it is very... I don't think we've gotten a single injury throughout this series, and that was not an injury from uh, from Ronnie Thomas. So they just straight pulled Ronnie Thomas, and they're like, you know what, you're just not doing good. We're going to toss in uh, Oliver Rodrigue. So, yeah, Ronnie Thomas, he ha he's faced nine saves or nine shots and then got pulled. Um, that's interesting, but clearly Oliver Rodrigue is who we should be rolling with. Yeah, 26 saves. Um, yeah, 26 saves. Uh, he did let in... I don't even remember seeing his name when the Islanders scored. I'm so confused. I don't even know, but nonetheless, we're going to give the Game 4 start to Oliver Rodrigue. And we'll see how that goes. Now, um, there's something I wanted to do. Ah, Syracuse, yes. Syracuse actually swept in the first round, <laughs> which is nice to see. So we're moving on to the second round, and I don't remember. I don't think we even made it out of the first round last season. I think we can look at Gustafson's stats for that. Let's go and find out. Can we look at the playoff stats? Yeah, so last season didn't even make it out of the first round. This season, we were able to, though, so that's very nice to see. Um... Has Gustafson leading the team in points? No, it's leaping off. Okay, I was going to say, he has two points, and he's leading the team in points. That just doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so now back in the NHL. So can we do what they were unable to do by winning both games on the opposite team's home ice? Let's see. We could take a 3-1 series lead if we were to do that, which would be awesome. <laughs> That's for sure. So, period number one of game number four. Let's go. Uh, that's three goals for the Islanders. <laughs> Rodrigue, buddy. Nice. Now, I hope he got pulled because three goals on nine shots is awful. Uh, I hope he got pulled. If he's still in there, I'm going to be upset. And I can't, obviously, you can't pull your goalie from this. Oh, uh, man. So, Tyler Wong, Braden Shen, and Oliver Bjorkstrand with the goals in that first period. And your Tampa Bay Lightning. 
Sorry, I had to yawn. Tampa Bay Lightning are down 3 nothing in game number four. So luckily, luckily enough, there are still 40 minutes to go in this game. That's in the next 20. Second period, still down 3 nothing, and we only have had 12 shots through 40 minutes of play. So I'm, I'm going to award the Islanders in evening up the series here. Because they are most definitely about to do so. Um, multiple power play opportunities for both teams. Um, but both of them unable to score on them. And we were going to get shut out, aren't we? We definitely are. Five minutes to go. We've yet to score a goal. And after that explosive first period from the Islanders, um, there was nothing we could do. We got shut out for the entire rest of the game. Great. Soderstrom, or, yeah, Soderstrom, yeah, yeah, Soderstrom with a 21 save shutout led his team to victory. Um, so it is now considered a best of three for the rest of this series, which will be interesting to see, um, of course, obviously. We'll see how that works out, but Kucherov yet to get a point since game two. Uh, he didn't have a point in game one either. Literally, game two is the only time he had a point that in this series so i guess we go back with ronnie thomas i mean Rodriguez still has good stats but Rodriguez had an abysmal performance last last game he also didn't get pulled which is surprising uh but no we're gonna we're gonna go back to ronnie thomas for this one it's just a, literally a freaking uh merry go round for <laughs> goalies right now they're just they just keep switching back and forth keep going round and round so let's go game number five now back in tampa can we win on home ice? Let's see. First period of game five. All right, we're up 2-0. Lawrence Like and J.C. Goddard. So two guys on our bottom six. Um, is that two guys on our third line, I think? It might be. I'm not too sure, though. Lawrence Like actually had a very early goal. I'm assuming they, the fourth line or the third line, I think, is what he is. I'm trying to think. I think, yeah, I think he's the third line. Um, started the game, so that's nice to see, I guess. But we're up 2 nothing. so maybe if they hadn't started, we wouldn't have been up 2 nothing. We could have only been up one nothing, Maybe 1-1, one, one, who knows. But anyways, nonetheless, <laughs> we're up 2 nothing, and oh my god, guys, we're out shooting the New York Islanders. Holy frick, someone take a picture, because it's probably not going to happen again. We're out shooting them 10-9. to nine. Uh, It's not much, but we're out shooting them. Second period now. We're up 4 nothing, and what did I say? We are now <laughs> not leading uh, leading in the shot category. But Ryan Merkley gets his first of the series, and Toon gets uh, his second of the series, which is nice to see. So uh, that's our third line coming in hot again. I think everybody on our third line has scored, if I'm remembering the third line correctly. Uh, but Ryan Merkley, there we go. I don't know if that's his first point or not. It could most definitely be, but I'm assuming not just because that game Kucherov had with Hedman as well. Uh, since Hedman all had all those points, I'm assuming Merkley has some points as well. But, yeah, we're up 4 nothing as we head into the third. And Tyler Wong makes it interesting early in the third period. Th literally 28 seconds in, makes it a three-goal game. But I was going to say... Oh, Jesus, maybe I shouldn't say it. Tyson Chose makes it a two-goal game, and there's still half of the period to go. I was going to say, just like the last game, okay, thank you, Kucherov, finally got back on the board. Even Brett Howden scored. Holy, that's unusual. Victor Hedman with his second of the series, and we put up seven on Soderstrom. Oh, my God, we even outshot them that game. Holy frig, what a miracle that one was. <laughs> Edwin with a goal and two assists was the first star. All right, so like I, I wanted to say before I even start, or as I was starting the third period there, that I think I'm gonna give us the win like I did to the Islanders in the last uh, or in the last game, and I I got a little worried there for a minute, especially after Joe scored, but then our offense just exploded for three goals in the last uh, man I think like six minutes. Um, had been leading our team in points. Nice to see. So, uh, let's just see. Uh, is our third... No, our third line is Goodard, Howden, and Tune. So, like is actually on the fourth line. My bad. But our entire third line did score, so I'm very happy with that. You know, I haven't seen much from the second line. Alavara doesn't have a single point. Hedden then has a goal, and Joseph only has three points. Wow. That's interesting. 
For our uh, third line, three points for Godard, one point for Howden, three points for Tudin. Our fourth line, two points for Pellamore, zero points for Steven Fast. I don't know why I said Steven, I just whatever. Lawrence Lake also only has one point. Now defensively, let's see, Hedman with seven. That was Merkley's first point. Wow, that's crazy. His first and only point was that goal. Very interesting. Pat Stillman with four points, though. Cal Foot with three, not too bad. That bottom pair, yet to get a uh, yet to get a single point combined. How's our top line doing? Jaspers with five assists, Drew Ann with four assists, Kutrov with six points, and five of those being goals. Now, uh, by the end of the series, I like Jaspers to at least have one goal on the board. That's what I want. I mean, like I like to, I'd like for him to stay around that point per game area uh, in the playoffs because I mean he's done very well so far in his playoff career, but like I said, I would like to I'd like for him to at least have a goal by the end of this series. That would be nice to see. But obviously, uh, you can't you don't always get what you wish for. That second line as well is just not doing good. So I'd love to see something from them as well. Now uh, I guess let's uh, actually let's see before we start this Syracuse is going to be playing Bingington in the second round uh, they were three and one I'm assuming yeah three and one because I didn't see they had the two one lead I didn't mean to back out of the calendar I was thinking backing out was going to bring me back to the NHL which was not the case nonetheless guys let's uh, let's see if we can close out the series here in game six in Brooklyn let's go first period of game six. Let's go Tampa. We're up one nothing. Pat Stillman with his second goal of the series. Very nice to see. Pat Stillman is really good on that second pair, guys. Oh, my God. He is a very underrated defenseman right now. Uh, but, unfortunately, we were outshot that period. Now, again, we're rolling with uh, Ronnie Thomas. So, hopefully, he'll be able to lead us to victory once again. And now, let's go second period. Can we uh, can we get another one on the board? Let's see. We cannot, but we also had held them off the board, which is very nice to see. So we're up one nothing, heading into the third period. We are getting outshot currently twenty four to eighteen, which is a pretty decent amount. But let's go third period. Sim, uh, Jonathan Drouin gets his first goal of the series. That is nice to see. Like I said, by the end of the series, I'd like to see a goal from Jaspers. Looking like we could very well end the series in this game, and it's not looking too good for Jet. Oh my god. He, he literally heard me. <laughs> oh my god. That is crazy. That's, that is some agency type of shit right now. Oh my god. I, I'm literally live streaming this right now. This is not pre-recorded. Oh my god. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Ronnie Thomas, get back into form, my guy. 35 save shutout. Who are the New York Islanders? I don't even care. Oh my god. What a great end of the series there. That was awesome. And we get to face the team I thought we were going to face in the first round last season. In the Detroit Red Wings. All right, so ah, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, obviously, Detroit not—they're a pretty good team with Drysaddle as their first line center. I'm very scared to do or to go up against that. Uh, wow, guys, Jasper! I cannot believe that. That is tremendous. So Jasper's he has seven points in six games right now. Nice to see. Drouin also has seven points in six games. Kudrov has six and six. Alavara still yet to get a point. Um, Henton, I think, got an assist that game. Um, very, very interesting. The forwards, uh, apart from that top line, really not much offense coming from that top, uh, coming from anywhere else in the forward group. Apart from Hedman and Stillman, to be fair, there's not a lot of offense coming from our defense either, which is very interesting. And then Ronnie Thomas. There we go. His stats, <laughs> his stats aren't bad anymore, which is nice to see. He really returned to form in that last game. A 35 save shutout to move us on to the second round, which I'm beyond happy with. I still cannot believe that Jasper's thing. So Victor Hedman currently leading our team in points with eight and six games played. Will he continue that here 
uh, throughout this second round series against the Detroit Red Wings, who obviously have a tremendous top line in Ricard Raquel, Leon Dreisaitl, and Nick Ritchie. Now, I saw that they played five games, so Raquel has six points. Dreisaitl also has six points. Ritchie has five. Asplund, this is their second line now. He has two. Casey Middlestad has six. That's their second line center. And Sam Bennett has five. Their uh, second line right wing. Their third line of Anton Slepyshev, Nazem Kadri, and Jack Redmond. Not too bad. And their fourth line of Carl Grundstrom, Nicholas Waugh, and Owen, <coughs> Owen Richter. So not a bad forward core. That's very good. And we actually have a top pair that could contend with ours. Or that could challenge ours for best in the league. And 96 overall, Rasmus Dallin with 90 overall, Jane Gostas Bear. So, <clears throat> what, uh, what does this mean? Um, that's a scary pair to deal with. Now, huh, you could look at Gostas Bear's point totals and see how he only has one point throughout five games in the first round. It, that could be a good sign for us, but that also could be a bad sign because it's a good sign that where say he doesn't get or say he sticks to that same amount of points uh, throughout the entire series against us. That is good, but he could just be or he could have just had a bad first series and then round two he's like ah, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna start trying now. I'm gonna get like eight points a game just because you know it's Ethan. We gotta we gotta do that to him just because you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean it could happen now. Marion Antons, I believe, was not on the team last season. I'm assuming... Oh, no, he had... I do not remember this guy. I'm confused. He is a very good defensive defenseman by the looks of things because he definitely doesn't put up points. Yeah, he's got really good defensive stats. Uh, very physical, too. I mean, his body checking actually isn't very good, but his aggressiveness and durability is sick. To be fair, he's got decent playmaking stats as well. He's got a good shot for a defenseman. He's wicked fast. Interesting. Six foot five to forty five, and he's nine. He's got ninety eight speed. Holy shit, that would be terrifying for anyone. That would be terrifying for like Chara, like three or four inches shorter than Chara, but he's coming at you in speed of McDavid. Oh my god, <laughs> no thanks. Philip Ronick, the actual Red Wing in real life, he's got four points. Wow, he's wow. He had a career year this past season. TJ Brody, 35 uh, years of age, 82 overall, still playing um, two points. Not too bad. He's, I don't know, I mean, he was, I think he was on that second pair for a long time, and he's a very good second pair defenseman. I mean, he's a very good top pair, too. But uh, Brian Dubelin rounds out that third pair. The goaltending is Ilya Sorokin, who's got a 925 save percentage and a 2.44 GAA that he has one shutout throughout the postseason. So. I guess that's all I really got to show you guys, and that is the team we will be playing up here and or up against in this second round. I don't know what I was trying to say there, um, but uh, I guess let's get it underway. Also in the Eastern Conference, we have the Rangers versus the Penguins, and then in the West we have Vancouver versus LA, and then Dallas versus Chicago. Now, what's interesting about this series is that we have yet to make it past the second round in the actual YouTube series. So, let's see. Can we do that here uh, against Detroit? Can we pass them and make it to the Eastern Conference Final for the first time in this series? We shall find out soon. Um, but, just just figured I'd go, th go over this. Uh, Syracuse has a four-win record and a zero-loss record currently. Down in the AHL, they won game one of their series against Bangington. Let's see if they can continue it off uh, in game number two. But let's go Detroit game number one in Tampa. Obviously, we won the President's Trophy. We have home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs, which I did forget to mention earlier in the episode, but that's fine. Uh, first period of game one of round two. Let's go. We're up one nothing. Jonathan Drouin opens up the scoring. Nice, nice to see. Big, big, big plays from Johnny Drouin. Uh, we're getting outshot again, though. Clearly a theme in this uh, in this postseason because it's it's not very it's not usually like that it's not often where my teams get outshot all the time in the playoffs. I know Houston had some problems with that as well, but like it's weird. Uh, so we're up one nothing, um, heading into the second period. Uh, there's not much to say. We're getting outshot. It's ten to seven. We definitely need more shots than that this period. We'll see if we can get that. 
Second period now, we're down at 2-1. to one. We definitely did get a lot more shots up here. We're also outshooting them. We also did outshoot them that period, but it doesn't matter. Nicholas Waugh and Ricard Raquel make it a 2-1 to one game, and we head to the third, trailing by one. Like I said, though, we are outshooting them now, which is nice to see, but we need to continue that pressure, and hopefully Sorokin will break under the pressure, and uh, we'll be able to even up the game here. So, 2-1 to one lead for Detroit as we head into the third. Come on, feed off the home ice fans, and we'll see if we can get a win here, uh, or at least even up the game to force an overtime. We have half the period to go, but Nazem Kadri does not want us to come back, and Nicholas Waugh does not either. So, Kadri makes it 3-1, and Nicholas Waugh with the second goal of the game, second goal of the series, makes it a 4-1 to one game, and your Tampa Bay Lightning have lost the first game of both series they have played so far in this in this postseason. Uh, Ilya Sorokin did tremendous as well. Now, I mean, that was only one game. Our offense clearly wasn't there. I'm not going to take um, Ronnie Thomas out. I still believe that he could be the number one for us in this series. We'll just have to see. If he has a bad game this game and our offense is there, then maybe we might uh, change some things up. Now, I switched to the AHL because Syracuse has a 5-0 and record right now in the postseason. We'll see if that changes here in their game number three. But uh, let's head on over to game number two, back up in the NHL. Can we even up the series here? Let's see. Game number two, period number one. We have an early power play. Can we score on that power play? We, I think we did. Pat Stillman was able to score on the power play with his third goal of the postseason. Man, this kid's a freaking defenseman, dude. What the hell? <laughs> oh, Jesus. What a period by your Tampa Bay Lightning. Round of applause. Seriously, we outshot them 13-2. to I have never seen that little amount of shots after a period before. Only two shots for Detroit. Let's hold them to two shots each period. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Two shots each period. Uh, that's the max they can get. And Ronnie Thomas, I mean, if you can save those two shots each period, uh, I think we'd win this game. Let's go, though. Let's, let's be real. They're going to get more than two shots. Second period now. Can we, uh, can we win that one, too? There were goals on both sides, and it's an even game. All right. So Casey Middlestat got his first of the series. Uh, TJ Brody as well, his first series or his first goal of the series, and his first goal, and I think his first point of the postseason, Yuha Alavara finally did something for us, which is tremendous to see. He was the best rookie in the NHL last season. He had a good season this season, but now he's just he just hopefully will start to come alive in this postseason because we're gonna need him. We're gonna need any goal that he can score because he can score goals. We have seen it before. Um, nonetheless, we're out shooting them 25 to 14. Very good. We, uh, yeah, we, we gave up a lot of shots that period, unfortunately. Um, uh, but it's okay. Let's go now. Uh, yeah, third period. We'll slow sim it. Let's see, uh, if we can get the lead back on the power play. We're unable to do it on the power play. Okay. Now the Detroit power play kicks in and Ricard Raquel gives the Red Wings a lead which is not good. Uh, five minutes to go in the third, and it's looking like Detroit may take a 2 to nothing series lead here. Mm, not good. Ronnie Thomas led in three goals on 24 shots. Also not good. Calfo was actually the first star of the game, which is, just doesn't make any sense to me. It probably should have been middle stat or Sorokin. Ah. Uh. That is that is not good. We are up against this Detroit Red Wings team, who are very good with a record of six and one. To be fair, not as good as Syracuse record of six and zero. Oh. oh my God, how they are six and zero oh through the postseason just makes no sense to me. Um, but yeah, let's head back up to the NHL. So Pat Stillman is currently leading our team in points. Actually, he's tied with Victor Hedman. Um, Top line, Jaspers also has eight. Durant also has eight. Kucherov hasn't done anything yet since that first series. Alavara still only, you know what? I'm changing up that second line. I can't do it. I'm Yeah, I'm making line changes. I want color more on that second line. Uh, good 
yard. How much do you pass the puck? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, I'd say I was hunting in. Yeah, you know what? Let's try that. Uh, you know what? Sure, let's try that. So we're gonna have we're gonna change our complete bottom nine. So Tyson Collimore, Ollie Hentinen, and Oleg Tudin will now be our new second line. Uh, we'll see how they work out together. Our new third line is Matthew Joseph, Stephen Fast, and J.C. Goddard. The fourth line is Yuha Alavara, Brett Howden, and Lawrence Light. As for defense, I don't think I'm going to change anything up. I don't want to look at that stone first, though. Uh, Hedman, still eight points. Merkley, only one. I don't get it. Stillman with eight, uh, Foot with five, Wooly with zero, Chipchura with zero as well. You know what? I am going to make some, one change. We're going to try Merkley on the bottom pair. We're, we're going to try it. Just, you know what? I, if it gets him to start getting points, then that's what if that's what we need, then we're going to do it. We'll, so we'll have Chipchura on the top pair, which will be interesting to say none the least. Because uh, is Chris Danovich ready to go? He could be. He's very good defensively. He's not. Uh, yeah, he didn't do too bad in the AHL this season. I'm just thinking. I mean, he wouldn't be bad. Uh, I'm assuming he actually is a 78. So I guess it's really not much of a change. He's just not good offensively. So we're gonna stick with our uh, NHL defense currently, but we are gonna make that change of Chip Chura and Merkley. I don't want to give up on that second or change that second pair. I should say not give up on it. But Ronnie Thomas has not done good for us in this series. Um, he just he just hasn't. It's just not been a great season from for, from Thomas, I mean, honestly. So we're going to give Rodrigue the start here for game number three and see if he can lead us to a victory to see if we can cut the lead um, of the series in half. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Game number three, now playing in Detroit. It's really not good. We have a, We're down 2-0 in the series. And uh, we lost both games on home ice, so we really need to win here in Detroit now. First period of game number three. Let's see what happens. We're down one nothing. Nicholas Waugh with his, I believe, to be third goal of the series, which is ridiculous, but okay. He's got three goals in three games for Detroit. Uh, all right, so one nothing Detroit lead heading into the second period. We're also getting outshot 9-8. to eight. Second period now. We were unable to score in the second period, and I'm just currently face bombing. I just I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Is this Detroit team just too good for us? Is that what's going on? Are they just too good? We heavily outshot them that period, but unable to score, it doesn't really matter. Like, honestly, does it really matter? 21 to 14 are the shots in favor of us. Let's go. We're close in the third. There's a chance we can bring it back in here. We just need one goal to tie the game. That's all we need. Or we will. We could go down 3 nothing in the series. Power play opportunity. We were unable to convert on the power play. Okay. Now in the last quarter of the third period, we have yet to get a goal, and it's going to be a one nothing shutout for Detroit. <sighs> Not only is it a one nothing shutout for Detroit, they also take the they the three nothing series lead. Ilya Sorokin had a thirty one save shutout. Yikes! So clearly Rodrigue is the better option there uh, for our starter at least. Um, but does it really matter? I can't say it enough. <sighs> Syracuse just swept the first two rounds, just by the way. just I'm happy that they're doing good, but not so happy that the NHL team isn't doing good right now. We're still looking at the AHL. I cannot believe. I cannot believe that. Oh, man. What do we do, guys? We're going to take you off there. We're going to take Matthew Joseph out of the power play. We're going to put Tyson Cullimore up there. We're going to put Alivar on that top pair. We're going to switch. We're going to put Merkley on the second pair with Foot. Keep Stillman, or have Stillman and Merkley together, then Hedman and Foot. Our new second power play is Cullimore, Henton, and Drouin. 
four man. I mean, I guess we'll just keep it the same. Why is Drew Wine not taking face offs, though? That's the question. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, actually, no, we are going to change the right handed defenseman. The PK, I mean, I really don't think it needs to be changed. I truly believe that it does not need to be changed. I'm not going to touch that. The goalies, we are going to keep Rodriguez in that. Um, what do I do, guys? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Kucherov, you're going on the second line. Uh, Matthew Joseph, you're going on the top line. Joseph, Drouin, and Draspers will be our new top line. Kalamore, Hentinen, and Kucherov will be our new second line, which I'm, I'm super excited to see how that, uh, how that works, to be fair. Uh, Tune will go back down to that third line with Fast and Goddard. Fourth line is not going to change. Defense, uh, I'm, I think I just, I think I should really take out Chip Chura. You know what? We're going to make some changes here. We're going to make some roster moves. This is going to take away from the AHL team, which may be bad. Obviously, they are currently 7-0 and right now. But uh, we're going to try something. Uh, we're going to send down Stillman, no, sorry, not Stillman, Wooly and Chipchura to call up Fair and Kristanovic, which is, it's, we're going to try to, I mean, we need to do anything we can right now because obviously I'm pri prioritizing the NHL. I mean, for good reason. So Kristanovic is a right handed defenseman. Yep, all right. And I believe Fair is a left handed defenseman. Obviously, on paper, that makes our defense worse in the NHL. Uh, we'll see how that works. Ronnie Woolley and Chip Chura were not happy about that. I am sorry, guys. Uh, Woolley's the left, right? Yes. But that's just going to be our new top pair uh, in the AHL for now. So, is that going to give them their first loss? Probably, just because that's how this game works. But, uh,. Actually, they I think they have time before their next series starts. Uh, well, yeah, they have time. Assuming there's at least like one game six or seven, I'd say they have time for uh, for us to maybe send them back down. But like I said, guys, we're we're up uh, we're up in high water right now, and we're it's just not looking good. We're down three nothing in the series. We have scored what one? We scored three goals in. Three in three games, sorry, I had a bit of a yawn there. Um, I do need to make sure Rodriguez is in net because uh, I'm going to stick with him as our starter currently. It's just I don't – just Thomas isn't doing it for us, and Rodriguez has not been bad, so we're going to stick with him. I say he's not been bad. Watch this game. He'll just completely shit the bed. Um, let's go, though, guys. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's go into the calendar. And uh, we'll sim game four. Will we get swept in the second round, or will we force a game five? Let's see. First period in Detroit. Let's go. We're down one nothing. Casey Middlestat with what I believe to be his second, if not third, goal of the series. Look at the shot totals. Look at shot totals why does this game hate me we outshot them 20 to 4 20 to 4 20 to 4 and we are the team trailing after the first period second period <sighs> It's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. We're not going to move on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Whoop, whoop. And we head to the third period, trailing by one yet again. 29 to 15 are the shots currently for your Tampa Bay Lightning. We, slow, we, slow, we shall slow sim the third period. And uh, let's see what happens. Oh my god. Rasmus Allen makes it 2 nothing. We're going to get shut out again for the second straight game. Not only are we going to get shut out for the second straight game, we're going to get eliminated from the playoffs. After that absolutely tremendous Series 1, we, uh, we got swept in the second round. 
Ilya Sorokin with 43. 43 saves. He had a 43 save shutout. What the hell? How? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it, guys. I really don't. Oh, man. I, I just, I can't. I can't stop looking at it. 43 save shutout. Absolutely unreal. Absolutely unreal. I'm very scared now because this, this offseason is going to be interesting to see what happens to say the least um jaspers he'll probably go back down to a 90 which is what he's actually supposed to be true as well joseph could go down to an 80 kutrov could go down to i think i don't know what his actual overall is i think it's 93 um alivara uh got boosted back down to his regular overall i am so beyond scared to see ronnie thomas fall to an 83 again if that happens, we are in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Um, let's see. What can I do here? I'm Obviously, we're done. I just want to see who's listed as a depth forward. Absolutely no one, which means I'm not going to send them down to the AHL. But, Kristanovich, you can be sent down. Obviously, Kristanovich and Fair will get sent back down. And um, just to make that AHL team even better... We're gonna send those two down. We're gonna only take. We're only gonna take up the worst two defensemen we have, cause why not? Uh, which is Bednar's. Although how is he doing right now? He doesn't have a single point at the playoffs right now. Really? <laughs> really? Okay. No, he doesn't. That's fine. We'll call him up, and then Kuhlman is the other one. Um, how's he doing? He's got one point in the playoffs. Jesus. So we'll call them up, and we'll send uh, Fair and Kristanovich down to make that defense even better. I could send down some fourth liners, but I just, I just don't think it's worth it. Now, as for the NHL, we're just going to do best lines. I could care less as of right now. But for the AHL, let's uh, swap in Kristanovich for that second pair and then Fair for the third pair. I guess that is a really good defensive core right now. Oh, my God. Uh, how is um, Kato doing right now? Oh, my Jesus Christ. Oh, what? <laughs> Shannon Cato has a 972 save percentage. What the hell? Oh my god, that is actually tremendous. Man, I wish Wooly, or not Wooly, sorry, I wish Thomas had to play that good for us in the NHL. Oh man. Wow, Shannon Cato is playing out of his mind. That is unreal. So we made their team on paper better, whether it actually makes them better or not, I do not know. Probably means they'll lose the next four games uh, that they play. Because that's just how this game works sometimes. Uh, but we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Um, we're just we're going to finish the AHL playoffs in this episode. So we face the Bridgeport Sound Tigers in the AHL Eastern Conference Finals. Now that's obviously our farm teams playing in the Eastern Conference. Uh, our NHL teams played in the first round this season. So... Let's sim the first four games, and we'll see what's up. We win. There's our first loss. There's our first two losses in this postseason. Bridgeport has the 2-1 series lead currently. Uh, Dell forwards for two weeks. We should probably only do one week, but it's fine. So a 2-2 even series. Uh, all right, interesting. I tend to win. To match our 10-2 record. Will we move on to the Calder Cup Final? Ooh, we have a Game 7 here in the Eastern Conference Finals. We, 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 we absolutely murdered them, 10-2. And then we lost 1-0 the next game. What the hell is that? Uh, I'm not going to do it like I do it in the NHL. We're just going to do one period, two period. Actually, you know what? Since it's a tie, we're going to. Since it's a tie, we're going to. 0-0 zero, zero tie currently in the third period. Literally... Possibly the next goal to win could be the team who moves on to the Calder Cup final. Will it be Syracuse? I hope. Power play opportunity. We're unable to convert, though. Minute to go, and we have an overtime game. And yet, yet to be, there is yet to be a goal. So, 
excuse me, so far in this overtime. We are shooting them 37-25. to 25. I wish our NHL team would have been like that this season. In the overtime period, it's not going to end early, but it is Syracuse who takes the series. Nice. We didn't even let them get a shot that overtime period. That's awesome. Vitaly Leonov, absolute beast, probably second star. Shannon Cato to make his stats even better <laughs> with a 26 save shutout. Actually, maybe they aren't too bad, because, or maybe they aren't tr uh, tremendous anymore because he's let in a, a decent amount of goals here. But, uh, yeah, we will be facing who in the Calder Cup final? The Chicago Wolves, which I swear we've done that already before. Obviously, this is the fourth time in the la or the third time in the last four seasons where the Syracuse Crunch have made it to the Calder Cup final. And like I said, I am positive it has been against the Wolves in, I think, the second year where we have done this. This is just tremendous, isn't it? Uh, I just realized Torsten Gustafson is an 81 overall right now, so he'll be ready to go in the NHL next season. So that's, yeah, that's exciting. Uh, Alexei Lipinov is an 83. Wait, wait, what? Alexei Lipinov is an 83? He's listed as a depth forward, so he's not actually an 83. Jesus, that was terrifying um uh that's what i want to do the goalies i don't know why i went through this screen uh shannon can't no that's regular season i was whoo that was worrying that was very worrying for a sec so stats definitely did go down uh that from that uh from that round but they're still absolutely phenomenal in 952 save percentage that is ridiculous i mean that is actually uh, amazing i mean there's nothing bad you could say about that so Syracuse versus Chicago in the Calder Cup final. Who will take the win? We'll go, uh, yeah, we're going to go in-depth to every game, or we're going to go in the sim every game. Obviously, we have a much better record than them. We've played a lot less games than them as well, but does that really matter? Let's see. Uh, first period, we're up one nothing in game one. Second period, it's 1-1 one, one after the first 40 minutes of game one. And, oof, an absolute beautiful period for the Chicago Wolves. And they take the uh, series lead to make it one nothing. All right, so let's sim to game number two now, and we'll see if we can win uh, over here in game two. Let's see. First period, uh, it's a 2-2 game. Second period, no goals allowed in the second. And in the third... Chicago's a clutch period in the third by the looks of things, guys. Not good. Their goal, I want to see their goalie's name. Essa Kultanen. Sounds familiar for some reason. He really does. I don't know why. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're down 2 nothing in the Calder Cup final. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Um, let's see. Game number three. Can we take a win now that we're on home ice? 1-1 one, one after 1. 1-1 one, one after 2, and 3-1 three, after 3. There we go. There's our first win of the series. And uh, it's now a 2-1 series for, uh, obviously, still for Chicago. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, let's just hop right into this. Can we even up the series uh, to make it a 2-2 two -two series? Let's see. Uh, it's sort of like goals. I was forgetting what I was doing there for a second. After the first period... We are down two to one. Second period, we're down. Or never mind, we're up. Or we're tied three three. Um, all right, I guess let's go. Uh, third period, can we take the series lead? We can. Jesus, there was a lot of offense there. Now I didn't really look at the goal scores. Let's just see three stars. Callie's a bit of jab with a goal and two assists. Leonov with a goal and assist. Gertzen with two assists. So actually, there's just there wasn't a, just like one or two goal scores there. Um, uh, there was actually just a bunch of goal scores, I should say. So it is now a series, uh, or a best of three series for the Calder Cup, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we'll know. Uh, we'll know the result here very soon. Hopefully, we can keep our record at fifteen and five. That would be pretty sick. Uh, if we win the next two games, obviously a possibility. Will it happen though? More than likely, no. But you never. But you never know. First period of game five, we're up three nothing. Second period, we're still up three nothing. And the third period, it was a three to one final score. 
Nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah, so we have a 3-2 to two series lead now. And we'll see if we are able to win the Calder Cup for the first time in this series. Because we've had plenty of opportunity to do it before. Can we do it this time, though? That is the question. We have two, we have two attempts to actually get this done. So let's get it done. Come on, good boys. Let's go, Syracuse. First period. Oh, my God. If we win it here, we could win it on home ice. Not looking too good, though. We're down 3-1 in the series. Or not in the series, sorry, in the game. After the first, though, we have plenty of time left. Second period. Oof, never mind. This is just a Chicago game. Yeah, we're just, I'm not even going to bother looking at the, uh, at the third period there. So, uh, Chicago, we're able to force a game seven. And I think for the second time in the last three seasons, Chicago could win the Calder Cup uh, against us, <laughs> um, which is awful to say. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. And not a great start in Game 7. I didn't get to click A yet, and B. Murray scored for the Chicago Wolves. Let's go. First period. All right, so it's 2-1. Uh, Murray and Brooks makes it 2. Gustafson makes it 2-1. Second period now. Oh no, it's we actually we actually screwed it up again, didn't we? We really did. We're down four goals here. Oh my god. I can't wait to look at the awards and to see that we have failed in the Calder Cup final yet again. Unreal. <sighs> Cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. After a hot 8-0 start in the playoffs, we lose in the Calder Cup final. Ah, yeah, we yeah we were 8-0, then we lost our first game to Bridgeport. We went to 7 against them, and then 7 against Chicago. Oh, man, guys. Holy frig. Absolutely gross. Detroit won the Stanley Cup. Both teams we lost to. I mean, obviously for the Calder. But both teams, uh, or both of our teams, lost to the eventual Cup winners in their respective leagues. That is heartbreaking. <laughs> that means if we could have got past Detroit, we could have won the Stanley Cup. And we could have won. Obviously, if we could have got past Chicago, we would have won the Calder Cup. Um, shit, man. Oh, that really sucks. That really sucks. And I believe I 100% positive that that is the third time in the last four seasons that we have made it to the Con or to the Calder Cup final. And also, I believe to be the third of or the second for the last three years that we were or we have played against uh, the Chicago Wolves in the Calder Cup final. So. Brett Connolly retires. He was just here for a payday, essentially. I mean, I brought him in to to make six and a half million. Uh, he didn't do too bad for us in the NHL. He had one really good season, to be fair. Forty points that season, and he had a career one hundred and ninety nine. So interesting. Uh, but yeah, he didn't do too bad, I guess. Uh, although that's pretty rough for a sixth overall uh, pick. That's really just not good. Uh, let's go check the entire league. Patrick Kane retires. Patrick Kane um, was on the uh, top line of Carolina, and he didn't do too bad. He had 82 points this season, I believe. Uh, 84, sorry, 84. But, yeah, Patrick Kane retiring alongside Phil Kessel, Nicholas Backstrom, who's 76, Andre Kopitar, who's 75, uh, Claude Giroux, Eric Carlson, who's a 90. That one sucks for Toronto fans, of course. <laughs> Logan Couture, who's a 73. Patrick Reddy, who's a 75. Little, who's an 84. Turris, who's a 70. Wow. Roman Yossi, who's an 88. Uh, a couple of Vancouver Canucks there, actually. Well, current Vancouver Canucks, not actually, like, real-life Canucks. Uh, Ocposo, he's 38. Is he still on that abysmal contract? No, he's not. Uh, Jordan Stahl, Gustav Nyquist, uh, Cam Atkinson, Michael Froley, Ryan McDonough. I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit, and there's obviously you guys can see. Uh, how about goaltenders? Let's see. Um, Carey Price. Oh, come on. Play one more season. To get that one win to reach 500 career wins, there's no way. If I was a goalie, 
I would have I would have stayed one more season. I don't care how bad I am at that point. Give me one start <laughs> so I can get one win to get my 500th win, and you don't even have to play me for the rest of the season. I could care less. Oh man. Um, obviously, Martin Jones. I expected him to retire. He was already low overall then. He's even lower now. Uh, Scott Darling at 69 overall. Nice. Michael Hutchinson also 69 overall. Nice. Uh, oh my god, I thought Ranta was 69 too, there for a sec too. He was a 71 though, so not too bad. Mike Condon 71, and yeah, you don't, I'm sure you guys don't care about the rest. But we're now at the draft, which I'm not going to do in this stream. I will do it in the next stream. Uh, because we are already 70 minutes in this one, and I'm not even done. It's probably at least another five to go here, because it's time to look at some awards. <sighs> Cannot believe. Disappointing performance in that second round against Detroit, and a diff disappointing performance in the Calder Cup Final for Syracuse. So let's look at team awards first. So... Uh, the Stanley Cup obviously went to the Detroit Red Wings, Tampa Bay, us. Obviously, we won the Presidents, and Chicago faced the Red Wings in the final. Wow, that's interesting, that rivalry. Remember when they used to be in the same, uh, I think I think it was division. I'm not sure. I know same conference, though. Uh, so they managed to get to the uh, Stanley Cup final against each other. That's interesting. Uh, how about the AHL? So the Calder Cup, for the second time in the last three seasons, have gone to the Chicago Wolves, which means yes. Because I know we lost to Tucson, we lost to Chicago, then we got fisted last season, uh, and then this year, obviously, we lost to Chicago. Um, the, Mc the McGregor Kilpatrick, what is that? Uh, trophy is presented annually to the league's regular season point champion. So this was the first time in the last four seasons we weren't the best team in the AHL. Interesting. <laughs> What the hell, man? Look at that. Five, five, the last five years, potentially the last six, I don't know, though, that we have recorded the best regular season record in the Eastern Conference. Conference? <laughs> Conference. Oh, man. Cleveland is really good as well. Cleveland has done a lot. Um, obviously, we have been the best in our division as well, the North Division, for the past five seasons. Richard F. Canning, so yeah, Eastern Conference playoff champions for the last three of the la or three of the last four seasons. To be fair, out of the last five seasons, it's either been Hartford or Syracuse, which is also interesting. We've lost to Tucson, we've lost to Chicago. We obviously didn't play Manitoba, and we've lost to Chicago again. So let's just see. Hartford did win it one year. So I was gonna say, is it literally just been a Western Conference sweep the past five years? So let's go back to the NHL and let's look at some player awards. So Art Ross went to Matt Gerard, Ty Ronning won the Hart, James Norris. Let me see Ryan Merkley. No! Why? <laughs> Damn it! Uh, I'm going to check right now. Why is it Oliver Ekman Larson? I wish I could actually like see like a message. I'm like, oh, why is it Oliver Ekman Larson? Um, let's go to the league. Well, that's sort of by defenseman. Let's see. So. It's just because he had the. It's basically just because he had the highest plus minus in the league. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Merkley. I don't know if he'll ever get it, guys. I really don't. This was the best season he's ever had, and probably the best season he will ever have. <laughs> oh man. Give him that plus minus he had last year. I guaranteed you he would have won it this season. Fuck, man. Damn it. I, I was positive Merkley was going to get it this year. I, not just because he's obviously on my team. I was just positive he was going to get it this season. That sucks. Oh, man. Lady Bing went to Ty Ronning. The Calder went to, I believe his name is Harvey Wagner. Ilya Sorokin won the Conn Smythe. The Vesna went to UC Soros. He also won the Jennings this season. Nikita Triumkin won the Bill Masterton for the second season in a row. Ryan O'Reilly won the Frank J. Selke for the, I believe, sixth season in a row. I'm positive it's the sixth season in a row, which is just crazy. Ty Ronning won the Ted Lindsay, and Tyson Joes won the Maurice Richard. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Let's uh, let's go back at the or look at the awards again, but let's look at them for the AHL. Um, or player awards, I should say. Uh, let's just see. I just want to see if there's anybody I know uh, slash anybody on our team. A lot of Cleveland. 
Uh, or a lot of Cleveland and Chicago. I meant to say Chicago originally, but there's actually only one Cleveland. Yet. Oh, two Cleveland, but yeah, I meant to say uh, Chicago. Um, MVP of the league went to a Chicago player. Um, most goals during the regular season went to an a, or went to a Chicago player. Best defenseman in the league went to a Chicago player. My MVP of the uh, uh, playoffs went to a Chicago player as well. Jesus, yeah. Chicago took home some hardware this season. I hate myself. Why? Why did Merkley not win? Tell me, guys. Please tell me right now. Why did Merkley not win? Anyways, guys, I'm done. I'm done for the episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you did all enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.